This video is sponsored by Lenovo. All right, welcome to XDA TV. We are here in Berlin for IFA 2022. Uh, I'm here with Adam Conway today. We just got done taking a look at some pretty futuristic new stuff from Lenovo. Uh, one of which is something that goes on your face. <laughs> and the other is a very futuristic take on a classic laptop form factor. So first of all, we've got the Lenovo Glasses T1. So and this is kind of like an external display that just attaches to your body, right? Yeah. So when I was putting it on, it was essentially a way to extend your phone's screen to your eyes, which sounds weird. And that's because it is. Um, but not just phones, right? So it supports Windows PCs as well, as well yeah. as Android and, yeah. and iOS. So it will work as an external display on essentially all of those. The way Lenovo described it was, it's an external display that you can use on a plane, on a train, or even just if you want something that's a lot smaller to extend whatever device you are currently using. Yeah, and I'm just thinking for me personally, going back a couple of years when I was traveling a lot, I would be all over this kind of device. Yeah. Um, you obviously think of it in terms of like a comparison with the VR headset, and the argument there is that you look a bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sitting on a plane on a train with this thing strapped to your face and these these glasses still aren't exactly as svelte as just a normal pair of, of glasses, but yeah. they're a lot closer to that than I think any AR or VR headset that I've seen so far. Yeah, I, I have considered bringing my Quest 2 on a, on a plane, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly Like practical. someone's definitely <laughs> taking a selfie with you uh, yeah. Yeah, if, exactly. if that happens. And, and this, but, is, this is just a lot more svelte um, yeah. and you get the full uh, 1080p resolution as well. Yeah, uh, the one thing I did find was that generally speaking, they would start to slip down your nose a bit. There are multiple different attachments that you can get to make it fit your nose better. But yeah, if it moved even just a little bit, you lost focus. But overall, like it was cool and you could watch a YouTube video on it and audio would come out of like the stems into your ears. So you could hear the video you were watching, but so can everybody else around you. So. Right, so it's not an entirely sort of like private viewing experience. You, I'll, I'll still go and want to pair it with like a Bluetooth yeah, headset yeah, if, yeah. You're, if you're on a you know public transport or something exactly, like that. Exactly, yeah, because it was quite loud. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> and of course, it's about more than just entertainment as well, because there's a productivity angle to being like, if you know, we've all been sat in an airplane seat or yeah. on a train, and it's not the most comfortable thing in the world to be hunched over a laptop in that space. Yeah. Whereas yeah. If, you, if you're looking at a big spreadsheet or something, you could imagine these kind of glasses, you plug into a laptop, you plug into your phone, yeah. and suddenly you have like a much bigger, expansive, uh, display in front of you virtually. Yeah, so like for example, you could have say, I don't know if you're getting an NDA or whatever, you want to read that on your on your glasses so other people can't see it. So they really kind of, is sort of invisible yeah. from the other side? They are, yeah, like people okay. can't see what you're doing. If they get in like right behind you and they're trying to look in through the lens, they might be able to catch a little glimpse, but it's actually mostly out of focus for them anyway. Okay. We, we found that when we were trying to take video of it, it's right, basically right. impossible. Cool. So it is very difficult to see what other people are looking at. So yeah, I think depending on how those focus issues are resolved and also the price, this could be a pretty interesting little gadget, especially for someone who travels a lot. Yeah, they still haven't announced pricing or anything or really much specific about the availability, but yeah, we do we know. know... It's coming to China in yeah. uh, late 2022, could end the rest of the world in 2023. Yeah, so ultimately this is just a display that sits on your face and it's kind of up to you what you want to do with it. <laughs> yeah, like um, there's a trackpad that you can use to control it on your phone. Uh, so you put them on your face and you control it that way. And you can just launch your normal apps, but there's nothing specific really to the glasses that you can actually use them for just yet. It's kind of like you figure out what you want to do. Yeah, with you have this floating, this floating space in front of you and you decide based on the device you plug in and, and what your priorities are, what you want to do with it. So exactly, yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty cool looking device. The other one that we have coming is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Gen 2, which is the next generation foldable laptop. And we say foldable laptop, of course, every laptop is a foldable. This one is different in that it has a foldable display. And yeah. this is still a very new product category in, in computing. Uh, but basically the big deal here is what you can do with it and how you can arrange the display. So you have, I think, four major um, screen modes, depending on how you count them. Uh, portrait landscape, of course, uh, in tablet mode when it's fully uh, opened out. Yeah. Uh, laptop mode, where essentially you fold the screen in half and it sits there and you have like two displays that are at a right angle to each other. Yeah. Uh, and also book mode, so you're opening it effectively like a magazine. Yeah. Uh, and for the two modes where it's opened out fully, you can basically 
attach a keyboard and you've got either a big portrait display or a big land landscape display. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it was actually pretty interesting to use it because while I came into it basically thinking like, oh, this is a foldable laptop, which as you say, <laughs> every laptop yeah, is every a laptop, laptop is foldable. Uh, it was interesting because it was a much larger screen surface area. And then the fact that you could take the keyboard and put it on top of the bottom half of the display yeah. and then use it as like a tiny laptop was really interesting because it both gives you that larger display for whatever things you want to do while also then allowing you to use it, say, in the back of an Uber or on a plane or something without being too annoying with how big your laptop is. And just having that immediate ability to switch aspect ratios as yeah, well, I think yeah. depending on what you're doing, you know, so for me personally, editing video, you might want to go landscape or for viewing a big document, you want to go portrait. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it literally is, is as simple as doing that on a regular tablet, like an iPad. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, you just have your, your wireless keyboard, whatever is sitting there. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing with me where like if I'm developing something or whatever, I'd want it probably more in portrait mm -hmm. because it's just easier to see to a longer. A code, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But then, of course, if I want to read something or watch a YouTube video, I'd turn it back into landscape. Mm -hmm. So and uh, it is really cool just to be able to have the portability factor as well, yeah. because obviously it folds in half. So it takes up less space or this basically the same space as, yeah. you know, a yeah. 16 inch MacBook Pro. It, yeah. That's the, that's the screen uh, screen size we have going on here. Yeah, right? yeah. It's a 2,560 2, by 2,000 roughly resolution mm -hmm. as well. So it's, it's, it's a pretty like high res. And, and change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's really, really good. It's really nice to look at. It got really bright as well, 600 nits. So it's, it's not bad, actually. Mm -hmm. And in terms of specs, we've got uh, Intel. It's a 12th gen Intel U9 series. Mm -hmm. They didn't specify which exact uh, SKUs are being used, but it's got to be high end. Up to basically aren't they? I think, but you can yeah. get this thing out with a ridiculous amount of RAM and storage. I think up to up to a terabyte in storage. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty like it's pretty high end regardless. Even if they haven't announced the specific chipsets, it's got to be high end. And also for someone whose work jumps from you know writing to video editing and a lot of different sort of form factors, you can see this being quite a versatile device. I think. Yeah, I think this is more a content creator's device uh, more than anything else, but. It, because I think that content creators will require that versatility for doing various different things or even people who may use their laptop for a lot more various professional things mm -hmm. rather than just one or two things. For example, if you're just working in spreadsheets or you're just developing or something, there's probably better use cases. But if you need your laptop to be your go-to machine to do everything, and you do a lot of different things, this is probably one of the laptops that you should consider looking at. Mm -hmm. A couple of questions I would have would be around battery life, and of course, we still don't know that yet. Um, yeah. And also just how window, how well Windows adapts to this form factor, because yeah. it's one thing to have the hardware, it's another thing for the OS to be as, as mature as it needs to be to take full advantage of this. And yeah. you know, the process of getting Windows on tablets has been a multi sort of generational endeavor to get it to where yeah. it currently is. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see how that pans out. Yeah, I think as well, you're not going to be able to install Linux or anything out of it for quite a while. Because <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to, I don't think that's going to work. I think any kind of custom custom job on that might well have to wait. But yeah, uh, yeah that's going to wrap it up for now, I think, from from. Berlin. Berlin uh, for the latest devices from Lenovo. A couple of interesting, very futuristic gadgets, and we'll have a lot more coming to you later this week here from EVA 2022. So be sure to subscribe to XDA TV if you haven't already. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.